Joining us now, a man who, like John Madden, is the best at what he does, host and play-by-play -play commentator for NBC Sports, Mike Tirico. Mike, it's so great to see you this morning. Thanks for being with us. Um, can you of speak course. a little bit? We've been talking about the coach. We've been talking about the color commentator. Yeah. We've been talking about the video game that our boys love to play and know him from. Yeah. Can you talk about the way John Madden changed what you do for a living? Oh, my gosh, Willie. It's in so many ways. And happy holidays. Uh, John Madden made the color commentator in football the star of the show. And so many of us who call games now have pieces of Madden next to us in certain ways that maybe the analysts don't even know. Uh, how they draw on the telestrator, how they explain things. John had a unique and special way of taking the very complexities of football and making them explainable to your mom. Explainable to a kid who'd never played the game before. And he did it with color and excitement and words and passion and emotion. Uh, you know, Willie, I, I think of going to cover the game up in Green Bay this weekend. We go in on Fridays before a Sunday game so we can do these production meetings that announcers talk about all the time. That's a Madden thing. So mm -hmm. Madden pulled the curtain back a little bit on football and made us as broadcasters all find a way to bring it closer to people at home. Yeah, that's, I didn't realize that. Yeah, we were talking earlier, too, Mike, about how in one of those production meetings, he famously said, hey, we should put a yellow line on the screen to show the viewers yep. where the first down is, and Fox Sports puts it in. I wonder what your memories are of John Madden as a fan. We're of the same generation, give or take a couple of years. Right. I remember watching him and Pat Summerall on Sundays, and I was a Giants fan thinking, oh, we've got a big game this week. Summerall and Madden are doing the game. I can still hear Summerall's voice promoting 60 Minutes and Murder, she wrote, coming up after the game. Game. What are your memories? It's murder, she wrote, with a long pause in between murder and she wrote, right? That's it. Uh, you, you're right. And, and think about this, Willie. If you're a, a fan who's in your 50s, late 50s, or, or older, uh, you think of Madden, the coach of the Raiders, who won 103 games. He was hired at 32, went up against Shula's Dolphins, the great Dolphins teams, and Chuck Knoll's great Steelers teams with a whole bunch of Hall of Famers and finally won a Super Bowl. And then, like you said, for me, it's thinking of the 49ers soundtrack with Montana and mm -hmm. Rice and those guys, the Cowboys with Troy Aikman and Emmitt Smith and Michael Irvin, the Giants, like you mentioned, with Lawrence Taylor, coached by Bill Parcells. All those teams feel like Madden was a bit of the soundtrack for them. And then, you know, for me, Madden worked with the two guys who called the most Super Bowls, Pat Summerall and Al Michaels and was a perfect match with both at different times and points in his career and over the years. Uh, I'm lucky, Willie, my agent is, uh, is the same person who's got his start in that business by representing John Madden. And to mm. hear the stories of Madden are not just the great football stuff, but it's the great person. He was so personable and so welcoming to so many. And I think that's why this loss is felt by so many people. Yeah, famously a very generous guy. Mike, Mike Barnacle's here with us as well. He wants to say a few hey. words, Mike. Of course. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Uh, it's always great to see you and great to hear you uh, at every event that you cover. I am old Thank enough uh, to recall the days when the only pro football games we would get on TV in New England were the New York football giants. The announcer was Chris Schenkel, and they were entertaining games. The Giants then had a great team. That's a long time ago that the Giants had great teams. Mm -hmm. But then all Easy. of a sudden, years later, John Madden arrives on the scene on Monday Night Football and on Fox and on CBS and things like that. And the conversational aspect, at least to me, was introduced to pro football. I want to ask you about the importance of the conversational aspect of working with someone, someone who you think when you're here as a viewer listening to him that, oh, that's the guy who was in the restaurant the other night talking to me about pro football. Or that's the guy who was in the tavern three stools down talking mm. about football. How important is it? Mike, it's huge. And you hit right on a great point. I think all of us strive for, can we be those two bar stools or those that couch in your TV room as you sit in your most comfortable chair at 3.30, 4.30 on a Sunday afternoon, 8.20 on a Sunday night, 9 o'clock on a Monday night after work, can we as an announced team, can we be the combo on the couch as you sit in your chair and you feel like we're in a conversation and you're pushed to say, yeah, that's right. You're pushed to respond to the TV in the conversation. And Madden's gregarious, warm way, uh, his comfort with players, his ability to tell a story, Mike, right? What's great about this show? What's great about 
so many shows. It's conversation around the table or around the bar, wh whatever you choose. Madden just made it a conversation. You know, I was talking to Brett Favre the other day, and Brett Favre, he's like a normal guy, right? So instead of this perfectly parsed sentence, Madden would just be in conversation. Uh, Madden's statements were a bunch of ellipses ended with a lot of exclamation points. And that's conversation at the end of the day. And that's why I think the magic of Madden is something we all strive to achieve in every booth that we walk into, no matter the game, no matter the sport. Just talk to people. Hey, Mike Tirico, it's Jonathan Lemire. Great to see you this morning. Between the coaching and the commercials and the commentating, and particularly the video game, the argument can be made that John Madden has done as much to grow the game of football and to spark interest in the game of football as some of the biggest names who ever played the sport, whether it's Tom Brady or Joe Montana, Lawrence Taylor, Walter Payton, uh, what you have, what have you. What do you think? Where does he rank in terms of some of If there was a Mount Rushmore of NFL, doesn't John Madden's face have mm -hmm. to be on there? No, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, to, to use your show's title, uh, way too early are players coming to the NFL with knowledge of cover two and uh, zone blitzes and things like that. You know why? because they play the Madden game at ages 7, 8, and 9, and 10. And coaches go for two points a lot because they say, oh, these coaches grew up playing Madden where you go for two all the time. And you say, damn, what tradition has taught us over the years. But, Jonathan, I think because of those three unique and different aspects, he does belong on whatever Mount Rushmore, whatever monument you want. Because as a coach, his winning percentage for guys who've coached 100 games is still the best. He won three quarters of his games. As a broadcaster, we've talked about his impact, the Emmy Awards. Anybody draws on the screen with a telestrator? That started with John Madden. Uh, that was somebody's invention off of his idea. Let's make this happen, as Willie said before. And then the video games. That's a $7 billion industry over the years, just the Madden video franchise because of John. And, and the one thing I, I want to make sure that I get to mention, we know John passed away rather suddenly uh, at 85. But on Sunday, Fox did an incredible documentary. And my friend Tom Rinaldi, who mm. I used to work with at ESPN, was the producer and the host and the writer, really the producer, who had no host. John got to see that with his family. So essentially, John got to see all the eras of football talk about his impact on the game before he, 48 hours, really, before he left us. And uh, we should all hope to live a life like John's. But we should all hope that uh, someday we get to sit and listen to people talk about the impact that we made on their lives because he got that chance on Sunday. Well said. He lived and worked with such joy, something we all should aspire to. Yeah. Mike Tirico, so glad you could come and join us this morning. You carry on that great tradition and legacy of John Madden every oh, time you please. step behind a mic. Great to see you. Thank you, sir. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. Stay safe. Happy New Year to you, Mike. Still. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.